Hey guys, welcome to Pokedex, the channel where I build decks for the Pokemon trading card game. Today we're going to be playing Seismoto the X again. Uh, as soon as Breakpoint was released, everyone uh, was talking about Garbodor being back in the format with Gar Garbotoxin and pairing it up with Seismoto the X, and also about Slowking and the fact that you can pair up Royal Flash with other ways to remove energy from the opponent's Pokemon and also pair it with Seismoto the X. But I don't think anyone uh, ever thought about playing both Garbodor and Slowking in the same deck. They kind of work uh, awkwardly together because Garbodor, Garbotoxin cuts off Royal Flash out of Slowking. So we can't use it if the Garbotoxin is active. Uh, but I actually managed to find a way to make it work. And this is the deck. I actually started building this deck by thinking what is the best Bursting Balloon deck that we can build and kind of reverse engineering it from there. So I started off with four Bursting Balloon. Uh, this is a, a, also an item card from Breakpoint. It, it's a tool, so you attach it to a Pokemon, and it says, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opponent's attack, put six damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Um, it's not all this card does, though. Uh, the first line says, if this card is attached to one of your Pokemon, discard it at the end of the opponent's turn. So this only lasts for a turn. Um, it seems nice against Night March decks, because we force the opponent... Well, they want to be attacking every single turn, and if they don't have a Lysander to switch out one of our guys, they are forced to attack into the active and take a knockout as well, so we trade well for prizes. Uh, but actually the, the fact that Bursting Balloon only lasts for a turn is really key here. Uh, I was thinking of other ways to use it, and if you stick this thing on a, a Garbodor, it's basically like, like playing an X-Maniac. Um, so you, you shut off the abilities for a single turn, and then back on your turn you have your abilities again. So that means that we can pair Garbodor with Pokémon that have abilities on our side, and Slowking fits the, the, the bill really nicely, so we can just use Royal Flash, hopefully stick another Bursting Balloon on a Garbodor so we can lock the opponent for further turns. Uh, so it's like a multi-purpose X-Maniac that we can just put on our uh, Seismato to draw extra prizes and stuff like that. I think it, it works really nicely in this deck. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start looking to the list uh, in order, and I guess I'll talk about all of the cards that are in here. So we start off with two Sheminiacs, uh, don't really need to, to say much about Sheminiacs, kind of a uh, very important card in pretty much all decks. And then we're playing a 2-2 Garbodor line, uh, once again Garbodor is important in some matchups, others not so much, so yeah, sometimes uh, we just stick a Garbodor in there and keep using Bursting Balloon over and over again and that just uh, wrecks our opponent's game while we use Royal Flash. But sometimes we just want to stick a Floatstone in there and keep it like against bad stacks and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a really flexible card if we can choose when Garbotoxin is active or not. And I guess this deck does that really nicely. We have three Seismato DX, which is going to be our main and only attacker, hopefully. I guess we can uh, spam Shamini Xs, but Seismato DX it's where he's at. I mean, Quaking Punch. Uh, locking the opponents out of uh, uh, items at the same time that Garbodor locks them out of abilities is really nice. Uh, we slowly kill them by dealing 30 damage and then extra 60 if we have Bursting Balloons in there. And then a 2-2 Slowking line, once again, not perfect for all matchups, but uh, they are actually very good in a lot of matchups. So being able to flip a coin and if heads we switch the take one energy from the active Pokémon and put them on one of their bench Pokemon in a format where there's so many Shamin EXs and stuff like that that are support Pokemon that don't really want to have energy on them. Having Slowking around is sometimes just like having Crushing Hammers every single turn, and that's really good for this deck. Uh, so yeah, that's the base of the deck. As far as items go, we are playing 4 Crushing Hammer, extra uh, energy removal, really nice. We are playing 2 Echo Arm, that allows us to recycle our uh, tools, and we can talk about the tools right now. So we're playing 4 Bursting Balloon, once again, it's the multi-purpose uh, tool that we run here. It's basically the, the glue that holds the deck together. And then we're playing a single Floatstone. Um, I'd love to be able to play 2, but the deck is kind of stuffy, but I think we can manage with 1. This deck has ways to reuse it by, by uh, virtue of Echo Arm and um, Super Scoop Up. So, and we can also use Zerosic on our own tool if it comes down to that sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I think it works nicely this way. I've actually, uh, I thought I'd really need a second one, but I, so far uh, I've been quite happy with just the one. But yeah, that's the, the our tool package and we run to Echo Arm to recycle them. And especially in a deck like this that plays Puzzle of Time, we have a lot of uh, tool recursion going on. 
because we can uh, puzzle of time for the echo arms and then use them again and shuffle uh, more tools back into our deck. Uh, speaking of puzzle of time, there they are. Uh, we play four because I don't think I think you either play four or none of this card uh, in your deck. So also allows us to reuse our energy and all that. So that's really nice. Uh, we have one Starling Megaphone, uh, really important card uh, nowadays. A, uh, uh, enables us to get rid of uh, tools from our opponents on Guard Boulder if we need to Royal Flush ourselves. And also <laughs> helps us get rid of the, the Fighting Fury belts from Nightmare so that they get knocked out by a single Bursting Balloon, which is also key. We have four Super Scoop Up, as I mentioned, really good to help us reuse our tools, helps us heal our guys, and of course helps us retreat and draw extra cards out of Shaman. So it's a very good card in this type of deck and we want to be drawing a lot of cards, so I guess Super Scoop Up is nice in that regard. We have four Trainers Mail, also to find our cards, everything, I mean, you know how that works. Also for Ultra Ball, for Via Seeker, don't really need to say much about that. We have one AZ, uh, it's good to help us uh, heal off the damage from the, the Seismato DX, helps us uh, discard the tool from the Garb Order if we need to, helps us retreat, so it helps us draw cards with the Shaman. It's pretty much the same as Super Scoop Up. We do discard the tool though, but sometimes we discard the Floatstone and it doesn't really matter because we can Echo Arm it back into our deck, so that's nice. We have a couple of lives Ender in here to be extra annoying, so this is kind of like a disruption card. If we, the opponent is building his bench up, if he's building an attacker in his bench, we can Lysander it up and use the Slow King's ability, Royal Flash, so that we can uh, get rid of energy uh, from the active, from that active Pokemon and start dealing damage with our Seismatode. We have a single prof Professor Virtus Observations for card draw and for Sycamore, and on, also we have one Skyla, which I find works really nicely with Puzzle of Time. Also it works really nicely with uh, the Bursting Balloons and all our tools, because we want to find them. Um, one Zerozik, uh, once again, it helps us a lot to get rid of our opponent's tools and of course um, a special energy and because, oh yeah, I forgot uh, one uh, card that I forgot to mention when we talked about the tools is Headringer, it's also a tool I guess, so we can shuffle Headringer with the uh, Echo Arm, which is really nice, so if the opponent uh, gets rid of our Headringer, we can just shuffle it back and also if we have the Zerozik in the discard pile, if we have both, we can just puzzle of time sometimes for both of them and immediately uh, just make sure that the opponent lacks one energy next turn, so we can play the zeros, get rid of their tool, and then immediately stick the headringer in there. Find that works really nicely. So, yeah, I really like the zeros in here. Um, uh, the the deck, I guess the the only thing that's missing uh, that we didn't talk about is the double colorless energy, but I guess that's pretty obvious. It's the only energy that we need here. We are going to be attacking with Toad. Um, I'd love to be playing Water Energy, but once again the deck is kind of stuffed. Uh, the reason for Water Energy is that Grenade Hammer sometimes could help us close out the games. And what I found with this deck is that sometimes we actually um, deck our opponents out because we are unable to kill them because we're only dealing 30 damage a turn, but at the same time they are unable to kill us. So what happens? Uh, ends up happening, sorry, is that we use Echo Arm a lot and we shuffle stuff back, so we have some more ways to shuffle stuff back than our opponent, especially if they are uh, cut out of items, and so they end up decking out and we don't, uh, <laughs> so that's really nice. Uh, I, the one thing this deck is lacking is stadiums, I guess, but I couldn't really find a space for it. I guess if you're really, really in the market for that, or if you're scared of your opponent's stadiums, I think you would play one delinquent might work nicely because it's extra disruption and for a single card you have a lot of ways to get rid of stadiums because you can just use VS Seeker over and over again. Uh, so I guess that's it. Um, but yeah, that, this is my list, so let's just play a match and see how we go. Okay, so we're playing against Fraj Veloso 69. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's how you say his name and he's playing a fire and colorless deck, so I don't really know what to expect. We're calling the coin flip. Uh, Tails never fails, and we won, so I guess it's true. Yeah, I'm, I want to go first. Okay, so we start off with a Trubbish, not the greatest thing ever, but we do have ways to draw cards in our hand, so I guess that's it. Uh, 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 let's see what our opponent is playing. Don't really know what to expect. Ugh, Flareon EX, the one from Generation. So we discard. I guess the Echo Arm and the Guard Boulder, we don't really need them right now, and I guess I'm going for the Seismetode straight away, because that means that we can put down the energy. Um, so I guess let's do it. I don't want to... yeah, that guy, that guy has uh, one hit KO potential, so I'm just going to use Shaman in here. I don't want to use the AZ for our 
seismitoad this turn. So I'm just going to put the slowpoke down. Maybe that helps. We do find the floatstone, which is nice. So we can just retreat. I can play the AZ and put the shaman down again. Let's see what extra cards we draw. Okay, we do have the slow king. That's kind of bad, but I don't think I really need it, so I'm just going to retreat with the Trubbish. Just giving my opponent the slowpoke. Once again, his deck has uh, one hit KO potential, so I'm kind of scared of that. I don't think the slow king is going to be ideal this matchup because we can just my opponent can just charge up his guys so easily that yeah I, I just think the slowpoke is going to die here, and I'm going to go uh, out with Seismitoad. Uh, we are dealing 60 damage, but that's not much. Maybe, I don't know. We just want to make sure that our opponent cannot use Blacksmith a lot. And by using Garboder, of course, we also cut out the Team Magma's Camerupt, which is going to stop him from grabbing energy from his discard pile. Uh, oh, Max Elixir. I don't really like that card in this deck. Actually, build this deck. Maybe I'll... Um, play it for you guys next up I know the yellow swallow has made a list but I don't like a lot of the cards they play there I mean basically I don't really like max elixir in the deck I think it's a dud <laughs> I don't really think people have grasped how to best use max elixir maybe I'm just I don't know I'm just Assuming I know better, but I don't. I don't know. I guess time will tell. Our opponent is going off here. Uh, I mean, they only need a blacksmith, I guess. But I think, yeah, they also already played the Sycamore, so I don't think we're going to see an attack here. Uh, that kind of makes me have to consider what I'm going to do next turn to be able to retreat from the Slowpoke. Uh, I guess we have to spend this Super Scoop up somehow. Okay, so let's see here. We do have the Crushing Hammer that we just drew. I'm definitely going to attack with those. So let's see. Uh, if I'm going to Super Scoop up, maybe I ev evolve into Sloking because I can use the ability. And then I Super Scoop up. Yeah, might as well. I mean, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Even I spent energy to retreat, it wouldn't make a difference. So I'm just going to move this energy. We hit heads, that's perfect. Just going to move that energy, and we could super scoop up here, and we hit tails, which sucks. But let's see if we manage to retreat here. Okay, we have the Via Seeker, which grants me the AZ that we played last turn. So I'm going for that, I guess. Yeah. Is that good enough for this turn? I think it is. I mean, I don't think my opponent can kill us next turn, un unless they have a blacksmith in hand. I won't play the crushing hammer. Oh yeah, but that doesn't kill us. That just deals damage to the the seismitoad. Guess it kind of sucks that we have the floatstone in there already. But oh man, because we can't use royal flush again next turn. But oh well. Guess there's really nothing we can do to help that, so I'm just going to put the slowpoke down because you never know if that thing is going to be active or not. And I'm going to uh, block off all our abilities from our opponent, so and from our side as well. But <laughs> I don't think it matters too much. Okay, we hit our opponent for weakness for 60 damage, but I don't think that's going to be a lot. But I don't know. Let's see what my opponent does here. Okay, so he evolves and evolves two of his guys, which doesn't really make a difference. I mean, he's locked out of. Okay, so Sycamore comes down. I actually like that. I mean, one one way that we have to win this game is actually deck out our opponent, and he's at 15 cards now, and he doesn't play an energy. Wow! So he's in big trouble, I think. Yeah, I think my opponent is just... Oh, he only concedes, of course. <laughs> uh, I, by missing an energy, he would have to find some other way to draw cards here, maybe play another Sycamore, and he would go, get really low on cards. So I guess we'll play another match. I wasn't expecting to win this, but I'll take it. And for our second match, we're playing against Lil Newbie with a very eclectic uh, deck uh, choice. I mean, water, lightning, and fighting Pokemon in there. We lost a coin flip. So my opponent is probably going first, yeah. Okay, we start off with two Trubbish, which I guess isn't ideal, but we can manage. Yeah. 
no real use in putting the other one down, I mean we could just Scala for an Ultra Ball and discard that rubbish if it doesn't make a difference. Zap Striker, oh. yeah I don't really know what my opponent is doing with that card, but I don't think we care too much. Selecting the starting Pokemon, yeah we want to draw a card of the Mulligan and we draw a Headringer, maybe that goes on one of our opponent's Lucarios? Guess we'll find out. Has a little zebra in there. Let's see what he goes for. Okay, we see a fighting energy coming down on that guy, and it does 20. Oh, okay, not really too worried. Just going to play the, the scale as I, I mentioned. Uh, we grab the Ultra Ball. Going to draw potentially a lot of cards, so I'm just going to play the Ultra Ball. I'm going to discard. Uh, the Lysander, and I think I'm going for the Headringer. I mean, I could go for the Birch, but we could fail a lot of heads, uh, which <laughs> everyone says this, but it happens to me a lot. So we kind of have to. Maybe it happens to everyone. I don't know. Okay, we play this Hammer, and we hit Tails. Doesn't really matter too much, though. So let's just use Shaman. And... Okay, so... I'll play the Ultra Ball or not. Let's see. Yeah, let's first use scoops. Let's see if we. Okay, we failed the first one. And. We also failed the second one, of course. <laughs> I mean, we could use the Ultra Ball, but I don't really see a point here, so I'm just going to use the, the hammer. And we fail as well. <laughs> so we failed basically all the, the four coins that we flipped on the first turn. Um, so it d doesn't really make a difference if we play the Ultra Ball or not, because we did not have an energy in hand. So it, I want this, to use this Ultra Ball to, uh, I guess, grab a Seismitoad. But because we couldn't find energy anyways, it didn't really make any difference. So I'm just, I just play the Hammer, because I'm going to draw a card next turn anyways. Uh, it's not that I'm really scared about Blitzel, but uh, oh well. Okay, we see a, a Meditite coming down with a Fighting Energy. So this is a Medicham deck somehow. I don't know. There's a level ball. Remoraid, okay. And our opponent goes for Reckless Charge, dealing 20 damage and taking 10. Okay, we drew the Seismitoad naturally. That's nice. We'll just put it down. Play the Sycamore. Let's see. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I'll play the Sycamore. N no real question there. Let's see what we draw. Okay, we have a scoop up. We have this slowpoke that I'll put down. I guess I can see what we draw here. Okay, we have another puzzle of time. I think that's nice because that means Ultra Ball. It means a lot of stuff actually. So I can just use Seismito this turn by retreating with this guy. Don't really think we need the. Yeah, this is. Mm, I don't really know what I'll do here. I can grab an Ultra Ball and something else. Maybe I just yeah. I'm I'm definitely going to attack here with Seismitoad. So I think I'll just attack now because we might need next turn. I mean, it's possible that the opponent just kills our Seismitoad. Uh, is I guess well I guess it's kind of hard because he needs a Stadium and a f strong energy. So if I'm counting right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. Oh, and he has the f the strong energy, so I guess he only kind of needs a stadium. Yeah, I'm j if if he finds a stadium, I'm just super glad that I didn't play the puzzle of time. But at the same time, we weren't really doing anything with those, so doesn't really matter too much. I mean, w the opponent still hasn't. Okay, so he has the stadium, and he still hasn't find artillery. So I guess cutting him off of uh, abilities is not that bad. But he's going to kill our seismitoad here, so that kind of sucks. What do I need to find? I guess I need the Seismitoad X, and I guess um, Burst Balloon, Bursting Balloon, would be fine or nice. I don't know. So here, here, I guess. I think I'm going to need maybe I don't know if I need Ultra Ball or not. Okay, so I, I'm going to start with a scoop up because I need to know if I draw cards or not, and we fail again. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, we have to play, play the the puzzles. Oh man, if we just ha hit heads on that, uh, it would have been so nice. But yeah, I'm just going to grab. I guess a toad. Cause that I don't know. Yes, yeah, the thing is, yeah, I'm going to grab a toad and I guess a sycamore. I'd love to grab the energy, but we need to draw cards here, and this way we can just put the toad down. Uh, and play this thing. Don't need to shuffle that head ringer <laughs> with the echo arm. Okay, so we hit a lot of stuff, but we haven't found the bursting balloon. Oh, we do now. Okay, that's nice. Uh, it's not the ultra ball that I want. Um, I mean, if I grab a shaman, but yeah, I, I, j I just want the bursting balloon here. I think it's just awesome because we put it down on the seismitoad and we're dealing 30 to the active, and then if he attacks us, he's just dead. So it doesn't even get to use the second attack. It's just we just kill him in the first one. So I guess that's what I'm going for. Mm, I'm just thinking if I play the Garbodor or not. I don't really think I need it. And maybe having the surprise Garbodor is better for next turn. I don't know. Let's see what happens. We also have the Lysander in hand, so we can grab another. Meditite or something like that. So my opponent plays the Karina and still item locked. But I don't think things are going as well for my opponent as they went last turn because Medicham just dies after the first attack because of Bursting Balloon. So maybe my opponent just passes the turn, but in that case, I'm just going to play the Sycamore and draw seven cards. And hopefully, we will get to the Bursting Balloon. And also, we can shuffle the one that we have on our Seismitoad back into the deck with the, the Echo Arm. So there's more chances that we draw them. Okay, my opponent chooses to attack and he's just going to die here. So he deals 90 to our guy and takes 60. Okay. And our opponent just concedes the game. Uh, okay, I guess he didn't really see the bursting balloon. I don't know, maybe he wasn't expecting that. Oh boy, this was also a very fast game. So I think I'm going to play a third one if you guys don't mind. All right, third and final, hopefully, final match here. Uh, we're playing against a player named Brunos, and he's playing Fairy only. So I'm expecting some sort of Aromatis power deck, uh, maybe with Gardevoir, because Max Potion is back into the format, so maybe the Seismitoad just locking out our opponents out of uh, items is going to be good. Also Trubbish, I mean, just cutting the... Um, I'll start with the Seismitoad here, so cutting off uh, Aromatis is going to be really nice here, but actually I, I think this is going to be a really, really, really tough matchup, because the opponent just has so many energy, and our deck is based around uh, cutting off energy from my opponent, and I'm thinking about Bursting Balloon, and the 60 damage that, he, that it has is not that great, so against the 220 HP Pokemon, even, I mean, Quicking Punch and Bursting Balloon every single turn, that's like 3 turns still, so... I don't think that's going to happen. My opponent discards two energies, which is perfect, because if we keep item locking him, I think he's going to have some trouble uh, shuffling them that back into the, his deck. So he goes off with a Spritzy and Professor Birch, and he draws Tails. She's fine for us. So he plays uh, down a Xerneas EX and a Trainer's Mill. Another Birch, okay. So he has a supporter for next turn for sure. And he's just going to pass the turn, but he, he managed to accelerate really nicely here. We drew the Garbodor, which is nice, so I'm going to discard, mm, <laughs> I guess, the Starling Megaphone. And the Via Seeker. I mean, because I want to draw extra cards with the Shaman. Don't want to discard the Garbodor. I didn't even know if we had another one, but we do. So I guess I'm just going to make the most out of the cards that I can play this turn. So let's play the Shaman down and draw four cards, which is super nice. Okay, we have a Bursting Balloon, doesn't really matter too much this turn, but I... Let's see... I'm not going to play the Sycamore, that's for sure. I'm going to item lock my opponent, so maybe... Maybe just pass here. I think the question is whether I play the Flippy cards this turn or not. Let's play the Super Scoop Up, and we fail. We're still failing all our flips, that's kinda... Kinda sucks. I also have the Crushing Hammer, but I don't know if I play it or not, I mean, I'm just going to Quaking Punch here. I think my opponent's Geomancy, maybe he should have played the Crushing Hammer, take the uh, the energy from the active, but I actually feel like uh, playing the Crushing Hammer in the right timing is important here, because if the opponent moves that Gardevoir to the front uh, too quickly, we can just 
get rid of the energy and they get stuck there and can't attack I don't know maybe it doesn't make any difference at all but it's just peace of mind I guess okay we see a guard of war coming down so I guess my opponent has this turn where they can uh, move energy around although this turn is the, the turn that they don't want to do that because they haven't used geomancy uh, at all so I guess that's the first geomancy for my opponent is putting one energy on the guard of war of course and the other one, if I had to guess, would go onto the Xerneas. Okay, so he puts on it on Xerneas EX. I guess it's also fine. Um, I mean, it's okay, we drew another Garbodor. I mean, my opponent is spreading energy around uh, with uh, Geomancy. Um, I don't think he can spread them too much. Okay, we fail again on our hammers. I mean, we're filling all the flips, but we are locking our opponent out of moving energy around, I guess. Oh, and we find the Headringer. That's perfect. We can just put it on the Gardevoir. That means my opponent loses the turn if he wants to um, evolve there. And I'm just going to Quaking Punch. At this point, I'm thinking... I think the best way to win this game is to actually deck out our opponent. If he goes all in, uh, I don't know if he will or not. But I, I think it's going to be really hard to kill him. Uh, I think if I were my opponent, I would just Geomancy for a single energy here. And put it on the Xerneas. Or maybe even on the Gardevoir, just to make sure, and then evolve it uh, the following turn, because... I don't know. I guess he doesn't really know what we're playing. I mean, he sees the Slowpoke, so he, he, ha he has to assume that we will be moving energy around. Maybe he thinks that he's going to use Aromatis a lot. I don't know. So he grabs two energy from the deck, and the Burst Balloon gets destroyed, uh, which means that we can use the Royal Flush. I don't even know if I want to. Uh, yeah, I think I do. I mean, I get that energy off of this guy, so we can't retreat with it, which I think is cool. I put it on the Aromatis. I'd love to lock uh, my opponent out of items again, because otherwise this makes really no difference here. So... I mean, I can shuffle the Bursting Balloon. I can just play the, the Floatstone also, because we have the Sycamore in hand, and I kind of feel like we need to play the Sycamore. So I'm just going to put the Floatstone down. That means that we are not going to be using Royal Flash again, but... Just Quicking Punch. Royal Flash is a... Pretty annoying thing, I guess. My opponent, if he wants to do anything, really, he just needs to put an energy on the active, and he does. And Sycamore, okay. Trying 7 cards here, my opponent is down to 11, so maybe, maybe, uh, we can actually deck him out, so he just moves his Gardevoir to the active position, but I guess he's going to evolve and pass the turn, okay. He's scared that I move the energy around again, but... Okay, so let's see what we can do here, uh, this is also a pretty uh, rough turn for us, so... Don't really know what we can do. I guess we what what we want to do is get rid of all the energy from my opponent's Gardevoir so that it, they cannot use them on the Seismitoad. Either way, it's going to be a really hard game, I guess. Maybe just keep everything that I have. I'm just going to shuffle our Bursting Balloon, I guess, and I'll play this Ultra Ball. Okay, what we have left? Okay, we have another Seismitoad. I think I'm going to grab that because I might need it for next turn if my opponent just kills our own Seismitoad or the, the one that's active and we'll play the Sycamore. I'm going to draw seven cards, still a long way from decking ourselves out. Okay, we have a super scoop up. That kind of means that we can use Royal Flash again if we hit. Uh, but yeah, let's play the Trainer's Mail first. Let's see what we have. Maybe. Okay, uh, do, 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 do I want anything here really? I, we could, yeah, I'm, I, I'm going for the Lysander, we could go for the Puzzle of Time, but I kind of want them both in the deck because I want to play a Sycamore maybe next turn, I don't know. So let's just use this thing, and you fail of course, <laughs> once again. So I can't play this thing on the Seismitoad, I don't think my opponent is playing stuff that removes energy, so I'm just going to Quaking Punch here, and it's a rough turn because we're going to lose a Seismitoad for sure. Maybe next turn we just AZ out of the Garbodor, I don't know, it's going to be super tough this, the, the position that we're in, our opponent just takes a knockout here and this is exactly what we don't want to happen I mean just taking knock knockouts and drawing prizes without having to spend more cards from his hand so that's exactly what we don't want to be happening here okay I'm just going to Lysander out this thing I mean is 
locked out of abilities uh, so I'm just going to keep and items of course so I'm just going to keep doing this thing the the more I can I mean maybe we force our opponent to play another supporter just to draw into an energy for the aromatis I don't know let's see yeah uh, it has it in hand that's terrible for us so it's just going to kill another seismitope yeah this is this is super tough I mean maybe should have az that shaming yeah I don't know I mean I I, I think we had to lie under there we forced him to play the the energy on the aromatis I guess that's that's the thing here. Another Lysander, doesn't make a difference, all of these guys have energy. But we can actually AZ out of that Garboder, just to be able to use Sloking again, but this is going to be tough, because we need to find a way to draw cards here. I'll just go with Sloking, I guess. Uh, Royal Flash, and we hit heads, that's perfect, okay, let's move on energy. We are really threading on, <laughs> uh, uh, really close to the, the abyss here, I mean... Let's play this thing. Let's see what we even have left. I mean, um, I think I'll discard the Zerozik and the uh, Lysander. I mean, we have Via Seekers in our hands, so I think we can do that. I mean, we can just get this Shaman down. Hopefully draw another Hammer and hit. I don't know. We we definitely need a tool. That's one of the things that we need the most. We We have a couple of puzzles of time. That's actually really nice. I'm going to lock my opponent out of items for a turn. Because this puzzle of time can grab us, I guess, echo arms, stuff like that. Also, uh, a supporter if we need. So I'm just going to pass the turn here. We are, I don't know, if my opponent plays a, uh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't, yeah. Okay, so we made a mistake. The The mistake we made was we should have gone with a Garboder into the active position. Because it would still be locking our opponent out of stuff, but we could use locking again next turn and then play the second Garboder. So that was definitely, definitely, definitely a mistake. And it's actually a big one, which might cost us the game. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. Um, we kind of need to hit on a hammer next turn, I guess. And my opponent just finds a Mega Turbo, which is <laughs> just destroying us, I guess. This is kind of scary. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, 330 damage <laughs> on our sloking. And at this point, I guess it doesn't really make a difference. My opponent just needs to take a knockout, so I just go with the Garboder because it doesn't really matter too much. We lose that uh, tool, but I guess we'll see what we will be grabbing with our puzzles here. Could go for a seismic tool, but that doesn't make a difference. So I think what I need to find is let's see let's see let's see we could go for a floatstone or maybe just echo arm uh, we shuffle that floatstone back into our deck could also grab i don't know maybe a skyla and a crushing hammer i mean we c we can grab the skyla with a via seeker so might as well just grab that thing yeah but that's extra yeah uh, i don't think i can do this i, I yeah i need to i need to find find the floatstone instead of the echo arm because the echo arm means we shuffle into the deck and we need the tool straight away in our hand because we're not going to be drawing cards here. Uh, yeah. I get that heads on that hammer. I think what we need to do here is hit heads on another hammer. Uh, but it's definitely going to be hard. I mean, yeah, I think we have to Skyla here for another hammer. If we have it in our deck. I think we do. We haven't played. Yeah, we only played one, so. I mean, we played two, but we got it back, so. I'm just going to do this. Hopefully, do we have the hammers in there? Yeah, there's one, okay. And there's another one. Three hammers, okay, they're all there. So let's just, I mean, we, we really need to hit here or else we are in big trouble. And yeah, I I don't think we even need to uh, retreat into a Shaman, so I'm just going to retreat into the Garbo. That doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have retreated. I mean, the opponent, anything that he knocks out, uh, he just wins the game. Uh, and he can't knock out the Garboder either because he would need... Okay, there's a Max Elixir. Does my opponent hit? If he had hit with a Max Elixir, that would be terrible for us. So I think he should have played the energy on the Xerneas because he could actually kill our Garboder. So yeah, actually that was a mistake. Maybe I should have retreated into the Shaman because that's 200 and, or 110. But we actually managed to win the game. Our opponent concedes. Kind of means he did not have any energy uh, left in his deck. So yeah, we won the game. I, I, I'll take it, definitely. I mean... Uh, we managed to deck our opponent out, spread his energy around. I mean, I don't think he played it r that well in the early stages of the game, but we actually managed 
to keep my opponent off of energy and off of abilities from Aromatis. So that's super good. Uh, that's the deck. I mean, it's a super annoying deck. I don't know if it's uh, uh, up there in, in, in the competitive spectrum. Uh, I think I have to test it more, but it, it definitely has uh, some very good things going for it. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you give this deck a try, and I hope you tell me what you think in the comments below. And just hit the like button if you're uh, if you don't want to spend your precious words <laughs> uh, and time. So I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye.